Hi, my name is Kirk Norbury. I'm a landscape photographer based in Scotland and today I'm going to be testing Lee Filter's new 15 stop Super Stopper. ND filters have been a key part to every landscape photographer's kit for quite a while now. The most common filter everyone's used is the sort of the three stop, four stop, but mainly the 10 stop, also known as the big stopper. Over the last few years, it's been used a lot for photographers to be more creative with their photography, using very long exposures, using bulb mode, so they're going past 30 seconds and going into minutes, maybe hours for their exposure. The Lee 15 stop super stopper takes this to a whole new level. Now you might think five stops might not make a massive difference, but it really does. To put that into context, if your base exposure, so your base exposure is with no filters attached and you're just getting a nice clean image. If your base exposure is a 60th of a second, with the 10 stop filter, that only equates to 15 seconds, which isn't that long. With the 15 stop, it becomes eight minutes. Now that's a big difference and that's why this filter is very usable in certain conditions. So today, I've come down to Diner Castle, which is in South Ayrshire. I only live about 15, 20 minutes from here, so it's always a really good location for me. I want to get some really nice long exposures. I'm aiming for around 10 minutes. What that will do, you get all this nice cloud coming through and it'll be nice, silky smooth. And over that, say, 5 to 15 minutes, you're going to be capturing the movement of the clouds, the movement of the water to create a really nice creative image. So I've moved around, tried to find a nice shot to include the castle. I wanted to include the water behind me and also get a shot where I've, I've got quite a lot of clouds in. So I'm shooting quite wide. I'm using the 24 to 120 on the D800. And now I'm going to go through setting up using the 15 stop filter and my process of uh, using it because it can be quite daunting at first using a filter like this because you're constantly in manual mode, you can't see what you're doing. So I'll go through my process, which is pretty much what most people do. And you can apply it to your photography when you get one of these filters. So the first thing you want to do is to attach a filter holder. You can use pretty much any 100 millimeter filter system. I use a LaCrate system. So the first thing I'll just do is just attach the filter. A bit of kit you'll need is either a shutter remote or an intervalometer. And you need this to trigger the camera. Because you'll be shooting in bulb mode, you need to go past 30 seconds where the camera can't control how long the shutter's open. You need to control it. I'm using a shutter remote. I sometimes use an intervalometer. And when I'm using this, it locks in. So you need one that locks so you don't have to hold it. So for settings, you want to be in complete manual mode. That includes your exposure, aperture, and focus. So I set it to M mode and I can control my aperture and my shutter speed. So my aperture can be, well, it can be anywhere you want really. I, um, for this, I haven't set it up yet, but we'll go through that in a sec. I focus manually, so I pre-focus without the filter and then I'll leave it there. Also make sure to have a good sturdy tripod. You want it to be nice and firm onto, into the ground so you don't get any movement during the shutter being open. So I'm now going to set up my image before adding the filter in. And just using live view, I'm going to compose my shot with no filter attached. And I'm just going to take a test shot so I can have a look at the histogram and make sure I'm happy with the image and the sharpness. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That looks pretty nice. I like the composition. I've got the castle on the right. Exposure wise, I've got a nice histogram, which I could use as my base exposure. F14 and my shutter speed is 1/30th. Now I need to remember that number because I can use that in the cheat sheet or on the app on my iPhone. So now that I've got my exposure, I can start adding the filter. In my pocket here, this is the filter here. It's even got sort of a rubber foam gasket on the back side. And what that does, it eliminates light seeping through the edges of the filter. So I'm just gonna pop that in. So I just push it down so it's nice and firm in. So the next thing to do is go into bulb mode. So there we are, we're on bulb mode now. Next thing to do is to check what the exposure equates to using a 15 stop filter. 
you can use a cheat seat you get with the actual filter or I use my iPhone because it's always with me and I use an app called ME Lite and what that does is you can work out for multiple uh, ND filters see if you're stacking them or grads anything like that so I'll just go into the the app ND filter select the filter I'm using so an ND 4.5 which is 15 stops and then I want to find a 30th of a second so just keep scrolling and there it is so that equates to 18 minutes and 12 seconds which is a really long exposure but that's what this filter's for so once i've got that then i'll take my remote uh, just put this into single mode the next thing i want to do is go into my stopwatch and just click them at the same time it's you can use an intervalometer it makes things a lot easier so one two three so I'm going to leave that now for 18 minutes and come back and hopefully I've got something nice. Just a couple seconds and it will be almost done. There we go. Let's have a look, see if I'm happy with it. Yeah, I think that's going to come out quite nicely. It's got a lovely silky sky as well. So I'm going to head back to the office now the final part of the review i'm going to go through the the image i took today but i'm also going to go through the images i've taken over the last few weeks with the leaf filter super stopper so the first image i want to go through is just one on harris i took uh, this one here and if you look at my settings i had the base exposure it was a 20th of a second and my aperture was set at f11 using the super stopper this was the image i was able to create which turned out really nice uh, i really like how the turquoise is coming through the water the sky is very smooth and silky and i just loved the look of the shot another shot i took 306 seconds uh, so that's another good long exposure that worked really well at you know getting this nice smooth water the waves were coming in pretty close to my feet but just because of that long exposure you're not seeing the water as clearly as you would with a quick exposure another image that came out quite well uh, this was taken on a more gloomy day at sunset so you've got that nice residual glow for at the horizon that I, I liked really well again this is these on a, are all taken on isle of harris uh, this is looking towards toe head and the, the one of the reasons people love using these very dark nd filters is having that very misty water which here was created especially around these rocks just here one great feature of using a super stopper is making people disappear. And what I mean by that is when your, your exposure is so long, the stationary subjects that you know they never move are just constantly overlapping anything that moves within the shot. So if it's uh, birds flying through, people walking through, if they walk through the shot while the exposure is happening, eventually the background will just come through that for those those still stationary objects which worked in this shot here this is on the isle of sky this is the fairy pools and it was very busy it was hard work trying to get a shot without somebody in it so what i did i used a 15 stop filter and did around about an eight minute exposure and what that did was there were people walking around this top ledge here standing there taking selfies etc which is great but i didn't want it in my shot so having that long exposure eventually the background came through and the people weren't there so you can see here this is turnberry lighthouse this is the before shot this is the base exposure and that's the after and the difference with this is at the time i was taking this the tide was coming in slowly so the actual level in water looking if you look at these rocks on the right hand side the level has actually come up which creates this little sort of wispiness around the edges of the rocks so let's have a look at today's shot so that's that was the base exposure i took while there it's a plain image but i wanted to try and get something a bit different there like i said uh, this was taken at a 30th of a second at f14 and there's the image you've got this lovely smooth water removes all those details and you've got a very nice silky smooth cloud as well one of the downsides of using these dark ND filters is something called color casts, which is just a bit of a change in color created by the filter. Now, in most cases, it's a slight blue or a slight yellow. Uh, it varies depending on brand. 
I've noticed with leaf filters, with the 10 stop and the 15, it creates a slight bit of blue. It's not a bad thing because you can fix it very easily in Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever you use to edit by just adjusting the white balance. Another downside of the filter is something called thermal noise. Now thermal noise is different to yeah, normal noise that you find in your images. You'll have noise in these images anyway because of the long exposure, which is expected but it's very easy to edit out thermal noise is a lot different it's, it's very similar to hot pixels it's, what's happening is the sensor is heating up and adding noise to the the image it's harder to get rid of than normal noise the best way to get rid of it is something called dark frame subtraction and what that is is you take your camera and use pretty much the exact same settings that you would for a long exposure take the same shot but this time when you take it you add the lens cap on it so it's completely black so it takes a five minute, 10 minute exposure. And what that does, it only picks up the thermal noise, which is what you can then use as a layer on Photoshop to uh, subtract from the other layer, which removes it. It doesn't do a complete job of it, but it actually does it very well. So that's something to look into. And just to show you what I mean, I'm gonna show you an image that has thermal noise in it. So if you look at this image and if you look closely, you can see little white dots over the image. That is thermal noise. It's not ideal, but to be honest, if you're not printing massive A2, A1 prints or anything like that, you're not going to see it very well. I'm only seeing it when it, you really go into 100%, and this is on a, a D800. Now again, the thermal noise can be, um, it, can, it can vary on different camera models. So in conclusion, my final thoughts on the Lee Filter Super Stopper, uh, very, very good. You know, I might have mentioned about the noise and color cast, but these are all fixable. So if you take that to one side, it's an amazing filter and I absolutely love it. Uh, they're not the only brand that do them. Uh, there is other brands that do them, but I trust Leaf Filters because their name is so well known around the world for making such high quality filters that they are very trustable when it comes to quality. I love the case it comes in, it's quite handy. I tend to have my own cases for them, save space and that, but it's still a good one you get with it. And I really like the foam gasket around the edge. This is great for blocking light coming through because the one thing we're taking these exposures is you do not want light leaking into your images. So you always want to put it into the very first slot so it's you're really sealing up this edge. Like I said, I've been testing this for Wex for the last few weeks and taking it over to Harris was a brilliant place to put this through its, you know, its limits and see what I can do with it and really try the long exposures during the day. Uh, I think the longest exposure I did was about 30 minutes altogether the amount of exposure length that i can get from this filter is incredible especially compared to the 10 stop like i said like 15 seconds on 10 stop eight minutes with this that's a massive difference it changes when i can go out and take pictures because usually i don't shoot very often during the middle of the day because it's too bright too much contrast and it's hard to work with with this filter is kind of opening that door because i can get interesting images that i feel that are more engaging and I just, I love the look of them. Usually to try and get that look, I would have to try and work towards sunset and sunrise to get that amount of exposure length, even with a 10 stop filter. So again, it opens up a, a new door of working at times I would never usually work at and trying something different. Overall, I absolutely love this filter and without a heartbeat, I would absolutely buy one. I really was, you know, the very, very good filters. And I can imagine this sitting very nicely with the um, little stopper, big stopper, and now the super stopper. If you're interested in owning your own super stopper, make sure to check Wex's website for more info and pricing. Thanks for watching. See you later.